hey guys welcome back to the channel if you are new here you're very welcome my name is couscous and this is the get ahead family in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys how to write a curriculum vitae or maybe not like how to write but i'm going to be sharing useful tips to make your curriculum vitae stand out or your resume depending on how you choose to call it or the jurisdiction you are making the application you all know on this channel i've been giving lots of tips on how to get jobs from abroad how to get jobs in the uk if you are in your country and different websites to visit to be able to get jobs so a couple of people have been asking me questions about oh couscous make a video about cv and cover letter and definitely i have come through for you guys so i'm going to be sharing with you guys the tips that have worked for me in preparing my cv and making it stand out in job applications okay i think it's only very few times that i don't apply for jobs i am always applying for jobs even if i have a job in fact all the times i have always applied for jobs i have always had jobs because when you are applying for a job with a job at hand you are not desperate you're not applying for just anything you're taking your time and making that application but when you don't have a job i think you're just desperate and just you're going to be applying for whatever comes based on my experience and based on the information i have been able to gather from career counselors from recruiters i'm going to be sharing them on this video so i'm going to give out a disclaimer here it does not mean that when you finish watching this video and put everything I, I say into practice that you would necessarily get a job. I'm going to be sharing based on my experience the things I consider that worked for me and the tips I have gathered from recruiters and career advisors. Now you're going to put your personal touch to whatever I share and if it works for me it might likely work for you although it's not a guarantee. Another thing you have to know is that you might do everything correctly and you don't still get a job interview but you have to try right. Now I need you guys to know that the template cv i'm going to be showing you guys the tips i'm going to be sharing with you guys worked for me in getting job interviews let me say here that when you make and when you submit an application online recruiters use a different means to shift cvs the most popular which is an applicant tracking system so an applicant tracking system when you submit the cv when a lot of people submit their cvs applying for jobs applicant tracking system will sift out the cvs and only shortlist or bring out cvs that really match the job description or the job advertisement based on keywords so for instance i'm going to show you guys because this video is going to be very practical i'm going to be sharing my screen to show you what i'm talking about i'm going to use a job vacancy and then i'm going to use a cv so that you guys would see the applicant tracking system is going to sift out or bring out or filter only the relevant CVs, the CVs that match the job description based on the keywords or the skills that they're looking for. So recruiters will set this, they can say, oh, a CV that matches 80%, CV that matches 90% or a CV that matches above 60%. I'm not a recruiter. I don't know the right words to use, but I want to think that you guys are following what I'm saying. In essence, what I'm saying is this, when you submit a job application, the very first point of contact is not the recruiter. It goes to the applicant tracking system and the applicant tracking system would only bring out the CVs based on the requirement that the hiring manager or the recruiter has set. If the recruiter is saying, bring me CVs with these keywords, these keywords, these keywords, which they already put in the job description or job vacancy then that's what the applicant tracking system would do so for instance the recruiter has said oh i need i would need people that have 15 keywords out of this uh, uh, application or job vacancy that i'm advertising and the recruiter has inserted those 15 keywords in the applicant tracking system and in the job vacancy that they are posting online now when a hundred and you know thousands of people have submitted the application the applicant tracking system will only bring out the CVs that have those keywords, maybe the 15 keywords that the recruiter is looking for. Those are the CVs that will get to the, to the recruiter's attention. So that is when the recruiter will even have the opportunity to look at the CV and now say, okay, I want to call this person for interview. I want to call this person for interview. So this is why you have to take your time to prepare your CV. 
I think this introduction has been long enough. Welcome back to the channel. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please do subscribe because this channel I share valuable information on how to migrate abroad through studies and through jobs. But let's get right into the video. So the first point I have to make here is that you cannot be using the same CV to apply for different jobs, okay? What I'm trying to say is this, you are a data analyst, you are a lawyer, you are an engineer, whatever profession you are in, and you want to apply for jobs. I do not mean, oh, you're an engineer and you're applying for a computer job, you're applying for an IT job, you're applying for a healthcare job. That's not what I mean. You are applying for a job related to your industry, but just has different names or different categorization right maybe today you want to apply for it specialist tomorrow you want to apply for it analyst next tomorrow you want to apply for computer analyst they are the same kind of jobs in the same category right they will probably need almost the same skills but what i need you to know is that you cannot use one cv like IT specialist to apply for all the jobs that you want to apply for no matter the variation. This is because each job vacancy would have its own keywords that they are looking for and the specific skills, skills they are looking for. And because recruiters use applicant tracking system, the applicant tracking system is only going to bring out the CV that matches the keywords that the recruiter is looking for. So the first thing you have to do is look at the job a description look at the keywords that are used in the job description and tailor your cv using those keywords you have the same experience yes but there's a way you can tailor your cv to meet the job description that you're applying for so for instance i'm a lawyer i have worked in a law firm before i have worked as an in-house counsel as a company lawyer and i also have an experience working in higher education and let's say i want to apply for a job that is called legal and operations associate now that job does not just want legal experience it also wants operational experience that's job one right and then i have another job that is looking for legal counsel they are both legal rules i'm not going to use the same cv to apply for legal counsel and legal and operations manager no i'm not going to do that but because i have worked as an in-house counsel which means i have done a lot of legal work but i have also shifted away from legal to do other things that may meet operational needs of a company i will tailor that experience to meet legal and operations associate does that mean that i am lying no I am just being able to tailor my experience to curate my CV to meet the demands of the employer. I have the relevant experience, but they will not sit at their offices to know. The applicant tracking system will not know that you have the experience if you do not use the keywords that the recruiter is using. I hope you understand me now. Okay, so I'm going to we are going to now go in to see the main thing because I've been talking since I am going to be sharing my screen so that you guys know that this channel is all about practicals. If I don't show you guys who will. So let us start with a job vacancy. I have already shown you guys on this channel how to find jobs, the website to find jobs, two important websites to find jobs. So if you have not watched that video, please go and watch it. So this is a series, right? We are progressing. The first thing is I showed you guys how to find a job um, that suits you, how to apply. So now because in the application you need your CV and a cover letter, I am now going to show you how to do a CV. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to make your cover letter stand out. So the aim of the, the CV and cover letter video is to be shortlisted for interview. Now during the interview, I'll also make videos showing you how to prepare for the interview and how to stand out during the interview, which will now lead to selection and you will now get the job. So this is a whole process. We're going to be going through this. After you get the job, I'm still going to show you how the things that are important for you to use to apply for your visa, everything that you need. So this is a series and this is why you should subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed because I'll be posting in series and you need to follow us, okay, in this series. I'm going to go to a job vacancy that I applied for. After I submitted this CV, I was shortlisted for interview. That's why I knew that this CV works. And this is because I have been using a previous CV template and I've been applying for a lot of jobs and I never for once was selected for an interview. The very first time I changed my CV template and I used this one. 
that was when I started getting interview invites. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is how to get your CV template. When I made a video showing you guys how to get a job on jobs.ac.uk, I showed you guys that that website can also give you CV templates in the UK. Depending on the industry you are in, to show you CV template, that website can help you prepare your CV. Jobs.ac.uk. When you come to this website, uh, you go to careers and then cv and cover letter cv so there's cv tips and there's free cv template there's cover letter there's personal profile there's cv resources so let's start with the cv tips okay so once once you open up you're going to see a lot of details here that can help you and you will know exactly what the employers or recruiters are looking for in cv now for the free cv template you're going to come here and then you're going to create a template for yourself they are going to ask you for your details qualification everything you need so i think that the cv template for uk is actually very straightforward it doesn't demand so much and uh, you can just get it done in in an hour or two now another place that you can get a good cv template which i used to make the application that i got shortlisted for interview was canva did you know that you can do your cv on canva of course i'm a content creator so i definitely use canva there's a free version so you can always get just download canva go to your either your laptop get the canva on web or you download canva app either way is good so just come to canva here and type resume so you're going to see here resume and what canva does is canva has a lot of resume templates so your industry determines your resume templates i'm a lawyer i am in a conservative profession i cannot be putting pictures and colors in my cv i don't know if you understand what i mean it's very strange my profession does not support all that <laughs> but if you are in tech you are in content creation you are a creative you are in arts your cv is going to look like a portfolio demonstrating your work colors arts because you are in the creative industry okay when i make a cv about content creation about youtube ah i don't know if i should show you but that is another video entirely you know that when i am pitching for brands to come and sponsor my channel or when brands approach me i will send them something called so you can send them a profile or a rate card and my profile or rate card is going to be very creative like if you get what i mean i don't know if i should show you maybe i should just show you guys briefly but that's not the reason for this video the reason for this video is cv but let me just show you guys for the sake of illustration because i need you guys to see this is just a one page rate card that i do i did for a brand so this is a creative kind of rate card it's just one page so it is a creative stuff so you have to make it appealing to the eyes so this is this looks more like a creative cv that i did you know i gave like you know about me and the figures so this is going to look like a portfolio because this is youtube i'm pitching youtube i'm pitching my creative portfolio so you have to also use a cv or a document that shows that side of you but i can never ever use that type of document for a professional cv in law <laughs> no because law is a very conservative profession so let's go back to looking for our resume template so this is what you can do you come here you look for a template now there's categories here you can find it based on the categories business social media video in fact thank god i so i've told you guys this thing education the one i used was a professional cv a conservative one so i just came here and i took one of the very one of the templates that had no picture because i needed it to be conservative because it was law i took one of the templates that had no picture and uk they don't use picture i think this is the template i used but i took out the picture because of my profession and you know he's this is a web developer so he puts his picture the jurisdiction would also that's the location the country will also determine if you should put picture so because we are applying to uk generally uk cvs for professional would not really require cv and uh, would not really require pictures so i never did use a picture so what you just do is open a template and then you can edit the template 
and insert your own information that means you want your template cv to look at like this and then you can click and edit the information and include your own information so i'm going to go and look for a job description and i will show you the cv i used to get an interview for that job that means i definitely did something right ah i'm going to place the job description side by side with the cv i got it i got it i got it i'm happy i got it okay so this is the cv that i ended up using uh, i have removed my phone number i changed the name of the companies and all of that so well i just need to show you guys this so that it buttresses the points i have been talking about so this is the cv i used it has a profile profile is a brief description of yourself that suits the, spec the person's specification of who they are looking for for that job you don't need a profile in a cv but if you do let that profile be the reason they call you or let that profile be the reason they look um, further into your CV. Let that profile be the reason the applicant tracking system will shortlist your CV. If it is not like that, don't bother. Don't even put the profile, just let it be. So, of course, Kuseme is a, an, a title, contract specialist. The job I'm going to be showing you guys was looking for a contract associate. So, I could have said contract associate, but I tried to say contract specialist because we're going to do the same thing now. I am a lawyer, I have done litigation, I have done different kinds of law, but because they are looking for a contract associate, I know some people will just write lawyer as the description, but you know they are not looking for a lawyer, they are looking for the person that can do the job description and they are looking for a contract associate. So the applicant tracking system may not shortlist a lawyer, but you see this contract associate, it will shortlist. And that's because in, my, in doing my job as a lawyer, I have done a lot of contracts, right? So I am a specialist, but I'm not going to use other of my experiences that do not directly match the job I am applying for. So I use contract um, specialist. So if you're applying for a data analyst role, your, your description should be data analyst, data scientist, you know, something that says, yes, this person knows what we're talking about. So it has your contact details, um, your phone number your email this is my website address and my location before now i used to put my linkedin address my linkedin i used to copy my linkedin and put it and made it a clickable a hyperlink clickable so that when you click on my cv to take you to my linkedin but because i have a website now if you go to my website you're going to see my linkedin link you're going to see the link to all my social media and what i do so it is just easier for me to put the website when when i did the cv on canva and i exported it it came out as a pdf previously i used to use microsoft word to do my cv so that i can insert clickable links hyperlinks that shows evidence of the work i have done so that if you're looking at my cv you can click a link and go and visit a page i'm talking about but because when i exported this cv it came out as pdf i was not able to put hyperlinks so but i was able to put my website so they see you may not need to put your location because it's not that important but i put the location so that they see that i'm not in the uk so that if you see that i'm not in the uk and you still shortlist me for interview that means you're indirectly telling me that you're going to sponsor my visa yes because if you don't sponsor my visa you will not bother selecting me and when i was applying for jobs like this i don't want you to waste my time if you're not going to sponsor me don't bother just don't call me in fact tell me at the point of application so that i don't stress because i cannot be wasting my energy on jobs that would not sponsor a visa same as you you may do without the location but then i've told you the reason i included the location don't bother about personal details like your sex your age your date of birth no please no don't do it and then this location don't go and put your full address hey this is for security reasons you can put lagos nigeria accra ghana don't go and put your entire address please they don't need it for security purposes because you don't know who your cv is going to enter whose hand your cv will enter now and the profile the profile should match the person's specification rather we're going to talk about it more so this cv is just two pages i don't know it's just because i want you guys to see clearly that's why i am zooming if you can see this is like this is what the cv looks like it's very neat and 
conservative but arrange appealing to the eyes easy to read make your cv presentable somebody has to see your cv and like to read it and not clumsy to put somebody off okay so this is just two page cv does it mean that my experience is only two pages no i only decide to make my cv two pages because that's the standard if your cv is longer than two pages you have to really justify why and i'm not in, in that place to justify so i use two pages cv so that i can now tailor my experience i'm not putting my entire experience here i am only putting the experience that is relevant to this job you can see that i'm applying for any experience that is not relevant i am not putting it that is why it is able to enter two pages so i have my educational qualification here i have my work experience here i have my skills and I have my expertise. This this is just a job, a work experience, and I have my interests and I have training. Now let us now see how I was able to tailor this CV to meet the job specification. Let's go. I'm gonna bring this one down. This laptop should not often leave me with Lou. So they're looking for contracts associates and um, and all of that. And then it says here. To assist contract managers in the overall provision of an effective contract management service relating to the university's research and innovation activity by reviewing, progressing, and completing research and innovation related agreements with commercial background, higher education sector funders, charities, and all of that. Main duties to compile and prepare from templates and standards a range of simple agreements in a timely manner, ensuring acceptability and compliance with university policies to manage a portfolio of contract action to provide regular this is the job description let's go to the person specification the skills they need which is the most important part why is this thing coming out of my screen i don't like it. you're blocking people's view you are blocking people's view they need excellent interpersonal communication they need keen eye for detail they need questioning and information gathering skills they need ability to work effectively as part of a team they need ability to work effectively under pressure they need um, ability to think creatively ability to progress numerous projects ability to prioritize and manage own work it they need ability to use it systems and software appropriately they need an undergraduate degree knowledge of contract law which ah you know already i will flag that one okay let's see what i put in the profile i said a legal professional with five years experience in contract negotiating drafting and review what do they need they need a they need somebody to join their contract department to be drafting contract that they have gained experience in both higher education this role is a higher education role it is in a university have gained experience in both higher education public and private sectors i have not worked in a public sector but the where one of the companies i worked that i was an in-house counsel we were serving the public sector so it was almost the same thing which i was going to demonstrate so that's why i put it because they said somebody you guys did, did you guys see when they said somebody has worked in public sector person specification said demonstrable experience of contract management in a higher education public sector ip management or commercial environment so i first of all said that i've worked in higher education and i said public i have public sector experience because i want you guys to know that i meet the person specification then i said with the sufficient skills and expertise needed to be an effective contract associate at the university of now tell me that applicant tracking system or the recruiter will look at the cv and think that it is a cv i have submitted before to another company no you know why because it is overly tailored to the job itself <laughs> why am i excited <laughs> okay let's go to the second part of course your work your educational qualifications is always going to be um the same thing so i'm just going to go to work experience so I, of course i changed the name of the company to abc limited but the description of the work i have done was not everything i did in the company it was the part that really related to contracts so preparing all relevant legal documentation drafting reviewing and negotiating all contracts and agreements to ensure protection of companies full legal rights managing and mitigating risk and managing internal and external contractual arrangements to ensure sufficient and cost effective implementation of company so i was really ensuring that i use contract contract negotiation contract management contracts and all of that mm -hmm. let's go to this other one legal compliance officer of course i've changed the name of the company right now 
if I'm applying for a legal role, a purely like legal counsel role, my first uh, sentence is not going to be contracts. It's going to be le providing legal services, providing legal advisory services to the company. That's what it's going to be. But because this role is contracts, do you know what I said? I said ensuring, ensuring regulatory compliance for any contracts and projects of the organization. I said performing company secretarial duties, affording legal interpretation. These are the things I did, right? Preparing all legal documentations for the organization, including contracts, memorandum of understanding, title tra transfer document, consultancy service agreement. These are all con different kinds of contracts. NDA, that's a different type of contract. Contracts of employment. Hey, I don't know. You guys understand what I'm saying, right? Because I know I did not just end there. I went ahead to give examples of the kind of contracts that I, I was involved in. I mentioned the kind of organizations I was involved in. I did not mention everything in detail, but I gave a hint of well, these are the kind of contracts I drafted. These are the kind of organizations I worked with to show I did not end there. I said, prepared over 100 consultancy service contracts, drafted different service level agreements, and drafted policy documents. There is no how the applicant tracking system will see it that will not say, this is the person we're looking for. Now, it does not end there, right? The reason I included this Global Alumni Volunteer Officer for Kumar University of London is because they needed somebody that has experience in higher education sector. And if I had ended all my all those experience with my contract role, my in-house roles, I will not show any experience in higher education. I needed them to see that this girl has higher education experience. So I put it here, Premier University of London. I put the things I did to show that I have worked in a UK university before. My last experience still highlighted contract, reviewed contract, drafted legal opinions and conducted legal research. So I made sure, uh -huh. now uh, let's go to skills. This is how I usually write. When I am applying for a job, I use the skills that they need in that CV. The first skills I wrote was contract negotiation, drafting and review. That's not the only skill I have, but I have to put it as the very first one. The next skill is research writing. Of course, if, if it's a university work, you're going to do research. Why you, you can't even draft a contract without research because you need the details of job or of the, you need the specific details of the circumstance to be able to draft a very good contract. I said critical thinking and problem solving. Did they, uh -huh, I'm sure they needed that. I said collaborative teamwork because I'm sure they asked for somebody that had teamwork disposition. Um, able to seek assistance from colleagues and line manager are timely. That's like teamwork. Able to work independently within process. Able to identify appropriate standard contract templates. Well organized. A desire to succeed. Opening to learn. That's like teamwork, right? So I put teamwork there. I said prioritizing and time management. Should we they say experience of deadline driven working? Experience of decision driven working. Um, they said ability to prioritize and manage own workflow. It's, so I put prioritizing and time management as one of my skills. I say use of IT systems and software slash CRM. That's because they said ability to use IT systems and software appropriate to the role. So I said use of IT software or IT systems, software and CRM. Communication and presentation skills. Did they ask for communication? The very first thing they asked for was excellent interpersonal and communication skills. So I put it to communication and presentation skills there is no how that applicant tracking system will not highlight this tv because we are literally matching the keywords in the job description let's go i put expertise here so expertise you can do without but i followed the template of the cv that i was using so it was another it was also another way to just highlight the the skills that i have and the areas i have i'm very uh, that i have an expertise in so i said contract law we, remember that they asked for contract law here understand they said knowledge of contract law so when this, this when i put expertise i said contract law legal drafting because contract is legal drafting strategic thinking regulatory compliance risk management dispute resolution governance advisory i put all of that administration and organization i want to show you guys when i put uk higher education marketing recruitment and administration just so that you guys see that i am actually interested in higher education okay what is remaining i now put interest higher education contract management oh my god I have brain. <laughs> Interest could be like your hobbies, right? Or whatever. But some people will go and write traveling, swimming. Is it relevant for that role? If yes, please go ahead. But if they did not ask for anything like that, or if it is not consequential for that role, you are just wasting time in that CV. You are just wasting space because I don't know if it will do anything for you. Now, I said interest. I said higher education contract management. 
higher education funding opportunities. That's because this role, they said, this role is going to, let me even show you, so that it's not be like I'm manufacturing things. This role said, by reviewing, progressing, and completing research and innovation related agreements with commercial bodies, higher education sector funders, charities, other collaborating research and funding bodies. You know what I said? I said, higher education funding opportunities. She be on this website, I've been giving you guys scholarship opportunities. So it means that I'm interested. It's an area of interest to me. So I put it there. Higher education funding opportunities, research funding, because that's what the rule is about. It's about drafting contracts related to research funding. I put higher education administration. I put higher education marketing and recruitment. I put internal, international student recruitment. Of course, you guys already know that that's an interest for me. Student mobility, career counseling and development. I made sure that I highlighted all those things because they fit into a university environment. Then I put training. So yeah, I think we're done with this. I put training and certification. It's not like these are the only trainings I have done, but I only included trainings that are most relevant to the role. I said, study UK, a guide for education agent, just because I want to show that I have been doing a lot of things about UK higher education. I put diversity, inclusion, and belonging because you, if you want to work in a multinational company, an international organization, a, a, an organization that has diverse group of people, you have to be able to demonstrate that you have the skills to relate with different people. That's why this training was very important. I made sure that I highlighted it very well. Diversity, inclusion, and belonging. Introduction to conflict management and negotiation. Negotiation is very important for contract drafting. So I put it there. I have I have literally covered everything. This I know this video is long, but I needed to show you guys practically. So what I said in essence is find a CV template. Either go to jobs or acid or UK to prepare your CV template or go to Canva and identify a relevant CV template that meets your career um industry if your industry is conservative use a conservative cv if it is loud and creative use a creative and colorful cv there's something called portfolio some organizations will ask for portfolio if you're a creative you're an artist if you are a designer they'll ask for portfolio of the things that you do go to canva you will see samples and then i said the outlook or the outline of your cv must be very presentable don't put too many words okay don't make it clumsy let it be easy to read make it precise mine is two pages if it, if your own should be three pages it means that it must be convincing don't put words that are not supposed to be there tailor your cv and make sure that everything you put in there goes to support the fact that you have the skills and experience they are looking for use keywords that they use in the job description that's the only way the applicant tracking system will you know bring up your cv why do you need to use the same keywords they use in the applicant track uh, in the job description this is because if let's say they, they say ability to manage or prioritize time or prioritize work and i go to my cv and say uh, able to work efficiently we are probably saying the same thing but there's no keyword there so applicant tracking system might not identify that oh this person has that experience if they say ability to communicate effectively with diverse group of people and i go to my uh, application and say able to interact with a different audience there's no keyword from that job description because the job description said communication and i say interact that's i didn't use the keyword so i have the skill but applicant tracking system will not identify my cv this is the reason you have to use the keywords in the job application or you're not just going to use the keywords anyhow or just isolate you're going to infuse the keywords in the sentence let me know if you need guidance on how to write your cv you can email me or book a session with me in one hour consultation of course you have my link in the description box that will show um, how you can book a consultation with me and if you need your cv being drafted or reviewed uh, you can send it to me i am i work with colleagues who can help you do that because i cannot do everything by myself but yeah that's how uh, it is let me know if this video has been helpful let me know what you think has it been helpful do you have any questions drop it in the comment section my next video is going to be how to curate your cover letter now you can do all of this and you are still not shortlisted but there are higher chances that if you do the if you put in the recommendations in this video you may likely be shortlisted you're not going to be shortlisted for all the jobs you apply for but the more jobs you apply for the more chances you stand at being shortlisted this worked for me 
that's why i decided to come and show you guys here because of course you know you're my guys i cannot hide anything from you i cannot get keep i have to share valuable information with you guys because we are progressing together that's it guys thank you so much for watching this video if you have any questions drop in the comment section let me know in the chat box what you thought about this video how helpful it has been for you and if you don't know how to get jobs let's say you've not watched the video i talked about how to get jobs how to identify the jobs that fit to how to identify the jobs that will sponsor your visa i'm going to link the video here in the description box and at the end screen so that when you're done watching this one you can watch that one thank you guys for watching i feel so fulfilled making this video i'm so happy all right guys i'll catch you guys later oh more it's not an easy something content creation is not easy <sighs> okay